Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Mama, today we have a real treat for you. We have one of my favorite people on the podcast this week. I'm excited to introduce you to her in person for you to learn from today. She's one of my favorites. She's one of my mentors. Her name is Alexa Martinez. She is also known as that sex chick. She's a sex and relationship by design coach, and she's on a mission to reform sex education and sexuality expression across the globe. One of the reasons why I love her. Alexa is from the deep south of Louisiana, and if anyone knows how to bust through taboos regarding sex, it is her. As I've mentioned before, she is that sex chick across social media, and if you go on to mine, you will see me always tagging her and sharing her stuff because I love it. She's also the founder of That Sex Group, which is a Facebook group that has been featured on the New York Times, and it's a community of love, sex, and relationships as the central focus. I have shared this group before when I've talked about sex. It is one of my favorite groups on Facebook. I love it. I love her. Alexa speaks and teaches internationally on these subjects, and she is truly someone to know. I won't waste any more of your time. I want to get into it with her and hear it right from Alexa. Here she is. Enjoy. Hey, 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 and welcome to the Fit Mama podcast, Alexa Martinez. Hi. (laughs) Hi, Jen. Oh my God, it's such a treat to have you on here. Thank you so much. It's a treat to be here. Also known as that sex chick, Alexa Martinez is a sex, love, and relationship coach. And she's one of my favorites. I came across Alexa a number of years ago and her and I have known each other now for a while. And Alexa is a wealth of knowledge. I am continuing to learn from her on a daily basis. I am so excited to introduce you, Alexa, to the Fit Mamas today. And we're just going to dive right into it. What is a sex, love, and relationship coach? Well, I think that that depends on who you ask and who identifies as a sex, love, and relationship coach. But for me, uh, I, goodness, it's so broad, but basically what I do is I, I help to liberate people when it comes to their sexual expression, which is directly connected to who they are as a person and their identity. Um, and so I really love working with people discovering what their desires are, where their boundaries lie, and ultimately achieving what they want in their sex life, sure, but also in their life as a whole. And um, when it comes to relationships and love, there's so much more available to people than what was maybe passed down to them when they were growing up. So the traditional boxes of a relationship is supposed to look like A leads to B leads to C. Well, if you know, my clients are anything like me, which they usually are. A did not lead to B or C. It led, led to R and Z and then back to F. So basically there's so much more available and you don't have to do it the way that maybe you were told growing up. And so uh, when that relationship part can look like a monogamous relationship or it can look like literally any kind of relationship by design. Mm, I like that. Redefining what relationship even is. Mm-hmm. So do you help people redefine this? Do they come to you in certain elements of their relationship status and they kind of seek help? How, how do people find you and how do they work with you? Yeah, there's a few different groups. Sometimes people find me because, um, let's see, I have a group of women that oftentimes come to me and they are post, they're post-marriage or post-long-term relationship, 10, 15 years they're single for the first time in a really long time. They might have kids that are preteens or teenagers. And the whole idea of dating and going out into the dating world is so scary. And they're not quite sure where to start. And they know that they want to do it differently, but they're just not sure how to do it differently and what is really available. So I love working with people who 
are just like, I'm ready to go back out there. I'm ready to do sex. I'm like just ready to experience all the things Mm -hmm. and feel like they have a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. So I love working with people that fall into that category. Sometimes people find me uh, because they are looking to heal or grow in some way within a relationship. And sometimes it's tough. Sometimes people come to me because, you know, sex can be laden with trauma and history and shame and guilt and repression. And so sometimes that, that shows up a lot of times that shows up in in intimate partnerships. And so sometimes couples find their way to me and they're just looking to navigate some um, healing of core wounds, some dealing with, you know, traumas and triggers and that kind of stuff and really wanting to be able to connect, you know, as, as a couple. And some people find their way to me if they're again, like me and in my partnership, my partner, Jordan, and I are very public with our relationship and we lead with, um, sexual development or relationship development along with personal development. And so, um, sometimes couples, what that looks like is when couples find me and they have a great relationship, they know that they're, they're intentionally creating it and they want to, they want to know how much better can it be? If it's great, like it is, I wonder how much further I can go. So there's lots of different people um, that will find their way to me. Occasionally, I have single men that find their way to me, and I usually funnel them off to Jordan, who's my partner who works with men, (laughs) Um, just because I feel like that's the best fit. Mm -hmm. But I work with all types of people, very inclusive. And um, what what I love is to give a broad spectrum. So no matter where, you know, if you're listening to this and it's intriguing to you, no matter where you are on your journey, like, like I have something for you, <laughs> you know, I can help with what's your next step. Oh, I love that. That, you know what? I mean, I'm happy that you brought up Jordan because first of all, it's so fun to follow you guys on social media You're <laughs> together, you guys. And he shares some really good stuff. He's definitely into personal development, much like you and coaching and the together you guys openly share um, so many different aspects of your relationship and just in a curious way that has people sort of open and asking questions. Is that conscious on your part? I think so. I mean, <laughs> anyone who's ever experienced Jordan will know he is like a bright beaming ray of light. He is full of energy all the time. Um, uh, his number one love in life is basketball. <laughs> his number two love in life is well, I, I consider him my dog son now too. Um, <laughs> our our dog, our pit bull, uh, Biggie James Smalls is his name. And then I am probably a close-ish third love in his life <laughs> after basketball and Biggie. <gasps> but, um, you know, he, he loves uh, the word he likes to use is fun, comfortable. He likes creating experiences or like digging into things that would typically be uncomfortable, but finding what the light and the fun is mm. in it. And um, you know, my Zodiac sign is a Leo. So I, I'm very like fiery and I, I love the stage and I love being out and, you know, in front of crowds and different things like that, but he takes it to another level. (laughs) So my general interest in like leadership and that kind of thing partnered with Jordan's just wide open aura and energy field. Uh, I think we make a really great duo and Mm -hmm. my sincerity mixed with his very curious playfulness, I think is relatable mm-hmm. to a lot of people. And we've been open since we got together. And I think a lot of that had to do with just his general interest in masculine feminine dynamics. And then my very grounded, I live on earth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it, he definitely airs a little bit more on the woo side, but together, together it's, it's a great combo. So my like feet on the feet on the ground, kind of head on the head in the clouds. I speak about sex, love and alternative relationships and just relationships in general. So our combo creates a space that I think feels safe for people to come to us. Totally. Absolutely. And you guys talk about different things as well. For example, I'm picturing, um, oh, I'm picturing, (laughs) and maybe this tells you a lot about what I'm thinking about Jordan, is him in this rope bondage thing Mm -hmm. in one of his Instagram images. And he was talking, I think, about Tantra meets BDSM in that one. And I was like, oh, I like this guy. What's he talking about? And just opening up. But you're right. There's something safe about you guys. Yeah, I think we we bring some of this stuff that feels really out there to so many people. I think we bring it up close and personal. It's like, you can get close to it. 
You can touch it. You can sniff it. It's not going to bite you. We promise we're mm-hmm. not going to let it eat you. You can give it a try. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think that that's really our approach. We both consider ourselves bridges mm-hmm. and we want to, we like being in that position. So where the everyday person is, that bridge, what's the next little step to get you closer to expansion, closer to enlightenment or closer to whatever it is that you want to be your highest self, Mm -hmm. um, the next evolution, so to speak. So both of us realize that in our communication and the way that we navigate, we have to make it real, Mm. real like it is for us. Um, because you know, when I look online and I think about people who teach about sex and, and all this stuff, when I scroll past someone who, just to give an example, is this like full, like maybe your pictures, it's like a woman and she's basically naked and just very like maybe dancing or, you know, talking about this tantric something or microcosmic orbit, if it's, you know, maybe a guy or something like that. And they're just talking about expression or taking her period blood and putting it on the earth or I don't know, some, some kind of out there, seemingly out there thing. It feels far away from Mm -hmm. me where I was many years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little closer to me now and I understand it and I get it and I have so much reverence, but for the everyday person, it's like, Oh, I can never be like that. Like that's way out there. Mm -hmm. So I like the space in between. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. And I think Jordan is the same way. Mm -hmm. Making it really accessible. And one of the things I've noticed about you and now you've brought to me through him is breath work. And I have always been into breath work and breathing and all the things. I mean, back since my fitness, early fitness days. And, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you got into breath work. Was it through him or how that's kind of influenced your sex life and, and what you do now? Oh yeah. So I like to think that when people find their way to me, it's, you know, they might think that they want to learn a sex technique, which is totally Googleable. And if how to's and Cosmo mags, if those worked, then people wouldn't still be trying to work with me, but you know, if they needed a technique, then that's really Googleable. But sometimes people do find me because they think a technique is what they are. That was what's going to fix whatever their challenge is. And, um, and then sometimes they go, Oh, I want to dig a little deeper and they start working with me. And yes, you will get a, a better sex life when you work with me through education and all this stuff. Um, but what I, what I, I would say is more unsuspecting is that when people come into my space or when they come into Jordan's space, they receive so much more than just surface level. This is what you do in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's, this is how you heal what's underneath, what's stopping you from being fully expressed in the bedroom. Cause no set of techniques, no amount of information is going to get you to the, the vastness that is available in pleasure, Mm -hmm. unless you don't go within and dig deep and, and either heal or, 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 or prioritize growth or something like that. And so when people find their way to me, sometimes it's for something seemingly simple. And then what they wind up getting is a total overhaul of their life and a, a reorganization of their priorities and what they what they want. And being told that, and, and not just being told, but they understand that their desires are legitimately accessible and available to them. So let's discover what those are. And so they will get that. But in order to get there, it's usually through other healing modalities. And so that could be breath work. It could be sound healing. They could start taking up meditation, uh, sound healing. There's so many different, so many different things. It could be going to, um, plant ceremonies, different and different variations of that. I wouldn't say here's ayahuasca, but maybe cacao (laughs) first. Mm. Um, but so breath work is one of those things that I consider a part of my tool belt. It's not the thing that I lead with. Mm-hmm. But I first discovered breath work at an A-Fest event. I'm not sure if you're familiar mm-hmm. yeah. with Mind Valley. Yes. Yeah. So I went through a, um, a breath work journey, Breath of Fire by Gregorio Avanzani, who is just an angel that walk, walks on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. And he led me through my first breath work ceremony and I went into my memories and had no idea that this was what was going to happen. I like went into a memory from when I was maybe six or seven and I was on the playground with two other girls from my class who I didn't realize that the exchange had such a lasting impact Mm -hmm. on me. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the memory feeling so hurt Mm -hmm. and left out Mm -hmm. and 
I, and it just breath work took me there. Mm. And I remember in, you know, as these two girls walked away from me in this memory, me as an adult walked up to my little version of me, Mm. little me and hugged me and said, it's all going to be okay. And in the, in this new version of the memory, I, as the little version of me melted into the, into my heart as the adult. And I just sobbed and cried like I had never cried before. And it just felt like it was just coming out of my body. Mm. And, and then I remember like, as soon as that kind of felt to completion, I went to the next like I went to the next thing and then I went to the next thing and not every breathwork journey since then has been so profound, but every now and then I get a really profound one. And it just so happened that my first one was, I was so open to it and so ready for whatever. I had no idea what I was getting into. And, um, when it came out, I, I just, I kept saying like, I had no idea that that was still with me. And it felt like I closed a cycle or I closed a loop with my breath by over oxygenating my brain and my body, mm-hmm. letting oxygen go into in between the tissues and in between the muscles that could be storing trauma that I don't even know that I'm doing that could cause mm-hmm. chronic discomfort, you know, like shoulder pain or back pain or something where it's like, oh, I'm actually holding tension there where trauma is being stored that there needs to be forgiveness or there needs to be healing. And, and there's so many different modalities for that. Breath work is, is one that can do that. And I've been fascinated with it ever since. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. I had full goosebumps when you shared (laughs) that story. That's so profound. And have you since then noticed it in your sex life in, in, or doing breath work with Jordan or, or anything that has improved or changed anything now that you've had that sort of shift? Yes. So I, I wound up studying and learning to lead breath work journeys, which is a bit slow, like cyclical. You're going for a number of songs. Mm -hmm. The breath of fire is more active. It's very powerful. You're forcing the air in and out. Um, and so what I trained in is a little bit different. Jordan is trained in Wim Hof Mm -hmm. and there's other, there's more words for it, but I'm just going to use Wim Hof because most people know Mm -hmm. uh, that style of breathing. Mm -hmm. And so it's more active and he does more in a meditative kind of capacity where you just do it for a certain amount of time and then you sit in meditation and then you do it again and you sit in meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when Jordan went to a tantric energetics was what it was called a retreat that he went to in Florida right around the first, like right around the first few months that we were together. And when he came back he, he felt this kind of confidence to start bringing it into our sex lives. And so he would put me into different positions where like my chest was open and my shoulders were back and he would tell me how to breathe, but he would go down on me. And so it would be this combination of like breathing and maybe oral sex or breathing, but being held. And so there are times when uh, guided breath work gets incorporated into our sex and some really magical things happen. Um, when you say, when I just said, you know, tantric, he came back from a tantric energetics thing. And you mentioned some tantra stuff a little while ago, but, uh, tantra breath, sound, movement, mindfulness, Mm -hmm. presence, Mm -hmm. that's what tantra is. Mm -hmm. And, um, from my perspective, and Mm -hmm. so, um, incorporating more breath work into our regular sex makes it more mindful, more present. If I, which is kind of hard for me because I grew up mostly Catholic and, uh, you know, masturbation was definitely self-pleasure. All that wasn't a thing. It was shamed and, you know, don't have sex until you're married, all that. And so I only ever understood that I needed to, if I was going to experience pleasure and I was not married and it was going to be masturbation, then it was a sin and that I needed to be quiet about it. And so, um, I know a lot of, a lot of women resonate with this and maybe even men too, people in general, where it's like, I need to keep my pleasure silent. I need to keep my pleasure quiet, but there is some really beautiful movement that can happen in a person's system, in their body and in their energy field, if they make sound with the pleasure. And so incorporate the breath, incorporate the sounds, a very tantric, um, experience. And some people will tell me, Oh, you know, you know, if I ask, what do you want to learn? I'll say, Oh, I'm, I'm interested in Tantra. Mm -hmm. Like, great. Look at your partner in their, in their eyes. When you go to sex, breathe at the same time Mm -hmm. that your partner is breathing in and out, take long breaths and have sex 
staying like that, locked eye to eye or something like that. I'm like, there you have it, a very simple tantric experience. Totally. You know? I love how simple that you're making it sound. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Fit Mama, I want to interrupt this episode super quick just to tell you a little bit about Alexa's Sex and Love Academy. It's a six-week transformational program that will expand your sexual knowledge, improve your communication skills, and create the sex and love life you've always desired. I have a link in the show notes that you can directly access the waitlist for this program until it opens up again. This is sex education for the 21st century. I'm so grateful Alexa created this. I'm so grateful to bring this to you and share it with you. She's awesome. Click the link, check her out, and get some sex education from that sex chick, Alexa Martinez. Back to the episode. Sounds so good. Oh my mm-hmm. God. That's great. That's great. Now I love, um, I love that you kind of bring in these different modalities for people and, and you talk about things like this so openly. How did you get to this place where you went from it being so shameful and not talking about it to talking publicly about it? So um, I'm not sure how much of my story, which I think that you know quite a bit of my story, uh, but I left college USM. So I went to University of Southern uh, Mississippi. Okay. And I'm from New Orleans. And I went for forensic science and biological sciences. And and I thought that I was going to do something in the field. And then eventually I was like, no, I, this is really hard <laughs> and yeah. it's going to take so much work and it's not going to be worth it for the amount of money that I'd be making, you know, after leaving college with so much college debt, mm-hmm. which is kind of the story in the States. But Anyway, um, I left college and instead of going to grad school, I went to work on a cruise ship Mm -hmm. and I stayed working on cruise ships for almost six years. And during that time I had throughout the six years for almost four of them, I was in a very tumultuous relationship Mm -hmm. with someone that I, from, I think when we met, I was maybe 22, 23. And we I just, I learned so much through just the travel, being in that relationship. And my family from South Louisiana thought that I was living a fairy tale of traveling the world with this magical person from a different country. And, and it was anything but magical. Sure. There was some magical moments, but it was filled with lying and cheating and Mm. infidelity and um, lack of trust. And for me, just unworthiness and feeling like, you know, if my body is my value, it was a sexless relationship. So I wasn't, you know, I was maybe 24, 25 years old and already in a sexless relationship. I just felt broken. And I felt like sex had happened before marriage anyway. And that was a sin. It was just a lot of, a lot of stuff came up in that relationship. And when it ended, um, I hit a version of rock bottom, gained a bunch of weight. Then through that process, wound up saying, okay, you got to get your shit together. Can I say shit? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So you got to get your shit to the, together, Alexa. And um, wound up finding personal development, getting into personal development, started with health and fitness and mindset, some NLP stuff, sales, all of that. And what I realized over time was that I could grow in all these other areas, but as soon as it came to dating or you know, that guy would come around that I would start feeling attracted to, I would lose my mind. Like I, I didn't know who I turned into. I, tur- I turned into like a 14 year old girl again, where I didn't know how to act with myself. And it didn't matter how much confidence I built in my body. It didn't ha- matter how, you know, with how it looked or my diet and the mindset stuff, it didn't seem to translate. Sex was so complicated. And um, eventually I completely shifted my interest in personal development and went full on into understanding my sexuality. Mm. And that really got spurred with um, reading books like Sex at Dawn and The Ethical Slut and understanding alternative relationships and why people could be into those things and how much broader sexuality truly is in love and relationships. And then I met someone who, I met, I had my first experience with BDSM Mm. and it blew my mind. It was up up to then, it was the greatest teacher. And 
um, revealer for personal growth that I had ever experienced. And it, and I had no idea that it was coming. Like I had no idea that that was what was going to happen. Mm, interesting. So, How did that yeah. open that up for you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I, um, I wound up in a relationship with someone on one of the ships and it was towards the end of my time. And I just had experiences where I was like, I had no idea that I would like that. And I had no idea that that would be so freeing. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that my body could do that. Mm -hmm. And someone to hold the space and hold the container and take me on a journey Mm -hmm. and then bring me back safely and securely, but bring me up against the edge so many times, but then take care of me after. It was so, Mm -hmm. things were so conflicting, but I would leave you know, our experiences feeling so free, mm-hmm. feeling so like such a weight lifted. And like, I was able to access more of me each time. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, what in the world, like what is happening? And then I got curious about it. Mm-hmm. So I started studying, um, sexual psychology, sexual deviancy. And what, what does that mean? Started studying kink. And eventually I, I started sharing this online and then sharing my sharing just my story online turned into a community. Mm. And then that turned into taking clients and running programs and fast forward a few years and here we are. (laughs) Wow. 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 I love it. And I just, oh, there were so many things that you said that I wanted to go (laughs) on with because that is like, wow, that's really exciting. And what an evolution for yourself. And I think just the underlying piece is that you're open and, and, and even if, things, you know, maybe came to you and you weren't expecting them, you were open in these scenarios. And I think that's one of the things I've noticed in my own, well, partly in my own personal experience, but also in my career version and how I do coaching, because just like you, you know, I noticed this piece where it was like, okay, people were coming for, you know, fitness or, or food related questions for my coaching. And they had, you know, a desire to lose weight or, or feel better in their body. But it was really that, it manifested itself in these ways around self-worth or unworthiness towards our own pleasure or things like that. So I just never even really realized it, that that's really what I was actually helping people with when it would be around their fitness, that it was actually about something so much deeper. And I love working with individuals who see this connection and who who want to go there because it is slightly scary, but they're still open. Like that's so exciting for me. But what do you, you know, and I mean, we can't let, let's say force anyone to do anything, but I have heard a lot recently from certain people that I've talked to that it just isn't the top of their mind thing. Just having more sex, feeling more pleasure. It's just, it's down the list. It's not a priority. It's, they aren't necessarily seeing the gateway that it is yet. What would you say to those people, Alexa? Yeah. uh, The thing is, at least there's a self-awareness that it is down the towards, you know, later in the priority list. Mm-hmm. And before I even go too far into that, I'm really excited about your transition, by the way. <laughs> I love this so much. I mean, fit mamas, helping them with health and fitness and pelvic floor and all of that. I mean, this is such a beautiful progression and mm-hmm. what you're able to do. And it's just to me, it's so holistic, mm-hmm. you know, what you're able to provide for people is so holistic. And I love being in your space. So thank you. And I'm so like excited that you, that you're answering that calling, Mm -hmm. you know, because so many people today, especially in this subject would be like, Oh no, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't know enough or all this stuff, but it's like, Oh, you've lived a life and here we go, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's calling. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Now, when it comes to someone who, you know, it's down towards later in the priority list, then I would say like, if, if you're listening to this and that resonated with you, then Uh, my question to you is, why do you believe that it's down there? And if you were to experience more pleasure, have yourself open to that, what else do you think that that comes with? You know, do, are you associating like, if I am more sexual, then it leads to what? Or does sex lead, is, is sex intertwined with obligation? Mm. Or sex intertwined with um, a a thing on the to-do list? Mm. And are you making it like, in your mind and in your body, or is it registering that it's not really about you and it's not really about you accessing more of who you are so that you can be, you know, show up as 
more of a mother or more of a wife or more of a person or just, you know, and if that, if and any, any of those identities didn't resonate with you, just more of a person, mm-hmm. um, fully expressed, feeling regulated in your system, feeling connected with yourself. And sometimes sex is not, like we're talking pleasure, not necessarily sex because those things are not, you know, go hand in hand necessarily. So True. That's some deep, that's some deep questions that you need yeah, to ask. Those are about. really good questions. Actually, those are really, you know, because you're right. What, what other associations have we tied into sex, right? That we're not looking forward to it per se. Yeah. You yeah, know? absolutely. And I think some, I think a lot of people are going to have that experience throughout their life at some point where, you know, their partner has more of a libido than they do, or their partner wants sex more than they do, or they want sex more than their partner does. And there's so many factors that play into that. But a lot of times people will stop at if, you know, my partner wants sex and I'm not into it, then it just has this weird tension of obligation. And Mm -hmm. then there's like this, I'm broken. And and there's no such thing. There's not that it's not broken. You're not broken. Your partner's not broken. Your relationship's not broken. This is normal. This is natural. Mm -hmm. And people, generally speaking, we're very sexual creatures. So then I ask, you know, questions like, yes, you might not feel the excitement with your partner because you have so many other things going on beyond just this, the sex or that sexual encounter itself. If I handed you the juiciest new erotic novel, a probably the juices would get flowing. You know what I mean? So it's not a matter of like, if you're not turned on or not, there's just more under the surface. And what do you need to dig under, you know, what do you need to dig into under the surface in order to access and feel okay with your pleasure? Um, just feel okay with experiencing pleasure. And sometimes I, there's the feelings of I'm not feeling seen. I'm not feeling heard. I'm not feeling met. I'm exhausted. Maybe if you have, you know, let's say anybody who has which I am not a mom. I just work with a lot of moms. Um, so I'll say I'm not a mom yet, but I work with a lot of moms and I'm prepared for this time where I have a one-year-old or a one and a half year old that is still breastfeeding. And it's like my, you know, for some people they're like, my body is not my own. I'm just touched all the time. I am at touch capacity. And there was a partner that just, you know, is not having the same experience and doesn't know. And maybe is feeling stress or pent up energy. And maybe if they have a male partner, the male partner learned through porn, that intimacy is shamed and hugs and touching and loving and cuddling is shame because that's not manly. They learned porn is, um, is celebrated. And so they understood that intimacy is sex. So that craving of the intimacy, and it sometimes puts this weird pressure around a relationship and around the sex itself when there's just so much more at play. And in my opinion, understanding what's at play allows for the individual to take control over how things progress instead of feeling like this whole situation, this potential shit storm is just happening to me every day. Mm -hmm. So if I understand what is at play and I understand the deeper feelings and the emotions and the desires and everything, then I have more availability and I have, yeah, I just have more understanding of what's, what's happening and I can control the outcome instead of the same thing happening over and over again, like Mm -hmm. sex happened and we're feeling really good. And then, oh no, it's almost a week has gone by. When's it going to happen again? Mm. A week has gone by. Oh, now there's some resentment. Now there's like tension. You know, I'm, I'm familiar. If anyone's listening to this and it's like, oh, she's, she's speaking my, she's like, she's speaking to me. It's like, I know what this place is like. And I also know what it's like to be so well fucked at, well, you said I can say shit, but I don't know if yeah, I can say the F word. Definitely. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also know what the space feels like to be so well fucked. Like I, I barely know my name and that's exactly where I want to be. And somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. you know, it's all, it's all good. And, and for me, it starts with a curiosity, even when the curiosity, like I'm having to be curious about the thing that is scary, mm-hmm. which is why am I not available for pleasure? And why am I being this way towards sex? What's underneath it all? Mm, that's so good. I love that you talked about the juices flowing and I can totally, I mean, I talk about this particularly with regards to a fantasy that my husband really taught me how to fantasize. And it was like when he was asking me, you know, what is your fantasy or, you know, at first I kind of thought, well, I don't know. I never thought about that before. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm very, I'll say serious in many regards. And it's just like, I never let myself go there. And I think so many of us uh, don't in that way. And then we get up just caught up, like you said, in the to-do list. And it's like, oh, another thing. And I know for me, I tell my husband sometimes, like, I'm, 
I'm going to make up a name for you and I'm going to call you this because, and I'm going to make up a name for myself and I'm going to feel like this or because I don't want to play this role of mom or paying the bills or doing these like same old things every day because it just turns out not to be sexy. Yeah, for sure. That, that a kudos snaps for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so much more fun. And having, I think that dialogue together around fantasies, and that's been a big one for us is that, you know, sharing vulnerably our fantasies, this is something that I never really, like I never even thought of before, but how that's opened up our communication on every other level in our relationship has been profound. Do you see that a lot? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Going into what just fantasizing in general and, and the, and the entry point of being, just having conversations about it and what could a fantasy look like? I mean, if you even phrase it like, I don't know, but what could it look like if you were to fantasize, what might that look like? You know, just kind of softening it up. So it's, it's less aggressive than, or abrasive as what is your fantasy? Mm -hmm. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, what might that look like if we were to kind of collaborate on one, what would that look like? And, um, to, to bring Jordan back into the conversation. He is a very creative, playful person, Mm. but he will say, uh, that like imagination Mm. is not something that he feels super comfortable with, which is very interesting because he can channel different, um, archetypes and characters and all of this. But as far as like using his imagination to create an environment or a scene is, is a challenge. Interesting. And so I, I get to make the fantasy more like a dialogue mm. where it's like, what if I did this mm. and then you did that? What mm-hmm. might you do next? Mm-hmm. And so just like figuring out ways to pull it out into the open and into space and you know, doing, doing coursework and learning from people, reading blogs, watching, um, even watching porn together, but ethically sourced porn that we pay for. I'll just throw Mm -hmm. that out there Mm -hmm. that we pay for. So we value because we value what we pay for Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, watching that together and what do you like about this and what could you see in the future? Yeah. I I love Mm -hmm. the channels that that opens up for people in general. Yes, yes, that communication and that just creating that space to talk about it. Now, one of the resources I don't want to forget to mention is something we're going to include the link so people can access this. This is the will, want, won't list. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that really was one of the things that Chris and I first did years ago now that I, I really believe opened up so many channels of communication for us. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned it because I almost did, but I had a feeling that you might you might yeah, mention it towards the it. end. But um, so a want, will, won't list is a list where you discuss what you want to happen, and and that want can be in the foreplay or the turn on or the sex itself or even the aftercare. Mm-hmm. So the the time after sex is complete. So what you want. Then there's a column on this particular list, which Jen, you have, you have, I'll make sure that you have a link to, yeah. so if people want to download that directly that they can. And then there's a middle column that is for will. And I like to phrase that as what will you do for your partner if your partner wants it? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of neither here nor there for you, but if your partner really wants it, you're, you're cool with it. Mm-hmm. So it's not maybe will is not to be confused with maybe because maybes are not allowed to come play. Mm. Um, and then your won't is your hard limit. You know, there's, this is when I pull out the safe word, pineapple, red, do not pass go. <laughs> um, and that's like a non-negotiable. The only time that, uh, the won'ts would be not, or are, would the, anytime that you bring up a won't and, and you have a discussion about it is when sex is not about to happen. Mm. So you have the want, the will, and the won't for the giver. And then you have a want, a will, and a won't for a receiver. What do you want to receive? What do you want to give? So um, the want, will, won't list that you're going to have the link to Mm -hmm. is over 300 questions because some people will come to me and they say, I want more for my sex life. You know, what we have is great, but we've been doing the same thing for like five years, seven years, 10 years. There's got to be something more. I just have no clue what the more is. As a great, here's a what will won't list. Let me show you what, let me show you a decent amount of what's available. Mm. And so it asks for each part of the body, almost at each part of the body. And then what do you want to have done to it? Would you like your ear bitten? Would you like your ass 
spanked? Would you like your skin uh, scratched? Or would you like kisses on your back? Like there's so many different categories and it kind of starts with something like very soft, maybe like kissing at the, at the top. And then it goes, you know, as it progresses, it gets hotter and edgier and kinkier. Mm-hmm. So it kind of gets the the mind going of like what might I be into and and very simple and then towards the end of it it's you know side by side masturbation or someone in the room watching or uh, there there it it yeah. gets quite a bit edgier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a fun experience. It's a bonding experience all on its own. So I did really enjoy that and I highly recommend it. So we will include that in the show notes for sure. Alexa, I could talk to you and ask you questions and go on like this for hours, but we've mm-hmm. got to cut this here. I really want to know though, before we let you go today, is there anything else you want to impart on us? Is there anything else you wanted to share and, and leave us with today? Uh, and it has been an absolute pleasure, Jen. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, so my, my thing is, you know, just considering where maybe some of your audience is, Uh, if sex feels like elusive, if it feels like some of the other kind of heavier, stickier stuff that, that we talked about during the show, um, something that, you know, the want, will won't list is amazing. Very soon. I'm going to have another freebie available. That's for relationship board meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's a little guide for you to do with your partner where you craft out, you know, map out the beginning of the week, um, your connection so that you make sure that you're spending time together, even if you only have short windows because you have kiddos or whatever, a time where you do intentionally connect and it will encourage you to even schedule the pleasure and put down maybe even some kind of sexual experiences. For me, Jordan and I like to put on sex exploration in there where we try something new, but there's no pressure for orgasm or even sex. Sometimes it's more like, let's just learn about each other's bodies and feel good with each other, you know, skin to skin contact, that kind of stuff. So um, that's going to be available soon. So I have an invitation for any of you who are listening to this to follow me. I'm on Instagram at that sex chick. And I just have so many cool tools that my um, amazing assistant, Bren, who's also a sex educator, I have trained her. So I know she's really awesome. She works with me now. And and so together, um, we're creating really awesome tools that are absolutely free for people to help make sure that you know, that they're leading their life with intention, that they're experiencing pleasure um, and growing. And then if you find, you know, that anything is that you want more, of course, I have availability for the more as well. We run the Sex and Love Academy a few times a year. Sex and Love University is available for those people who want to become sex coaches. And so, yeah, I've got, I've got you covered. You need something? I got you covered. Yes, you do. Thank you so much, so much, so much for your time. I will link up everything as well as your awesome Facebook group, which I love. So I will have that. I've, I've actually shared it in the show notes of other episodes of the podcast too. So I'm a fan favorite. So thank you so much, Alexa, for all that you do. Thanks so much for being here today with us. We so appreciate you. Thank you, Jen. And that is all for today. Thank you, Fit Mama. Namaste. Namaste. 